want to learn uh, a manual car. If, uh, for instance, you want to be driving pickups, light trucks, and commercial passenger vehicles, and which means you will need class C. You must first learn how to drive a manual car in class B, so that going forward, because the, most of the vehicles you'll find from classes C, D, and E will be manual. Most of the vehicles will be manual. So if you're going to drive cars in class C, then you must learn how to drive a manual car. If you're not bothered about these classes, then you can learn how to drive a small car uh, using a manual car and at the same time learn also how to drive an automatic car because when you take your test learning to drive manual cars is not uh, difficult you begin with theory yeah understand how the car works or vehicles work what technology is used what makes a car move after you have the theory part or aspect of the vehicle then now you go to practicals yeah so this is the correct approach on how to learn uh, how to drive a car also very important do not wait to go into the class to learn how to drive a car do not wait to go into the class if you decide you want to learn how to drive research how motor vehicles work i have done some video on how cars work and that can be uh, very helpful for you so research on how cars work after you've done your research and you know how a motor vehicle works then you're ready to go to practicals once you go into practicals this will now be in the class or if you have a car that you can access, you can practice what you've learned, but also practice when you have someone who is able to guide you on how to do that. Today, our main purpose for this video is to learn how uh, to drive a manual car. Okay, this is your car. A car has the engine. It has the gearbox. And it has the wheels. Yeah. So all these things work together for the car to be able uh, to move. So the engine provides the power to the gearbox. And the work of the gearbox is to control the power and the speed at which the car moves. So once the engine provides the power to the gearbox, the gearbox then transfers that power to the wheels based on the gear ratios and the amount of power that is coming from the engine then that determines how fast or how slow the engine is moving so uh, briefly these three aspects are involved on how a car operates so you start the engine you engage the gear once you engage the gear, the gearbox is activated. Then the gearbox, uh, when the engine is running and the gearbox starts rotating, then it transfers those uh, the power to the wheels and the vehicle starts moving. Now, a manual car has what we call clutch. We have what we call a clutch. We have the gearbox and we have the gear lever. So, these three things, or these three items, are what moves a car, a manual car. And you must know how to operate the, the clutch, the gearbox, by engaging the, uh, the gears using the gear lever in order for the uh, car to move. So, these things work hand in hand for the movement of a car. So let us look at the arrangement of these things in a, in a motor vehicle. So we have the pedals, uh, which is uh, something like this. This is your clutch. This is your brake. And this is your 
accelerator and this is your accelerator pedal so these are the pedals in a manual car a manual car has got three pedals where else an automatic car has only a brake and an accelerator but we are concentrating on a manual car so we have the pedals then we have the gears we have the gears now uh, most cars have got forward all cars have got forward gears four or five or six and a reverse gear and a reverse gear which is just one so if you hear someone say a car is a is a is a is a four gear speed it means it has got four gears if it's a five if it's a five speed car it has got five gears if it's a six speed it has uh, six gears uh, that move the car forward however uh, very few cars have got up to six gears majority of cars have got up to five gears and very few cars and these are very old cars that are up to four gears so those gears are arranged in this format so this is how the arrangement of the gear looks like in a car and this is a five speed because most cars are five speed so i'm giving you an example of a five speed car this is a five speed car and this is how uh, the gears are arranged in a car the only difference you might find is the positioning of the reverse gear so most cars the reverse gear will be towards uh, the right side some cars you'll find that the reverse gear is actually here so you would need to move here to engage uh, your reverse some of them you'll find the reverse gear is here others you might find that the reverse gear is here and the uh, number one uh, gear is down here but mostly it's either at this position or at this uh, position so this is the arrangement of gears but for our lessons we shall use this we shall use this model we shall use this model where the reverse gear is on the lower right side of the of the arrangement of the gears and the gear number one is on the upper left hand side of the of, of, of the gear position in the car so these are this, this is how gears are arranged there is this this center line here this position it means your car is at neutral this is the neutral position and the gears will be disengaged at this point and the car will not be connected uh, basically what happens when you engage a gear you connect the engine and the gearbox yeah when you engage a gear you connect the engine and the gearbox and this now causes the motion to the vehicle but when the, when the gear lever is in this position it is neutral the gear is free so the car cannot move it's very important for you to note the gear lever rests here at the center point so when you release your gear lever it will always come to the middle of the gear and to find out whether the car is in free gear you move this gear lever from left to right or vice versa and when when it's moving across it means the gear is free if for instance it's in gear number one then you see the gear will not be able to move towards number three and it, it will not move towards this side because it's already engaged at gear number one so that is how the gears are arranged in a small car so having seen how the gears are, are arranged in a small car let us now go to the next step